I'm Chosen Architect, and this is All The Mods 9, and today we set up the insanest of insane mob farms. That's right, and we also start making a 16-time Nether Star production. Hopefully you guys are ready. Now, if you happen to miss the last few episodes, to kind of go over what we have been doing here in All The Mods 9, is we have been prepping ourselves for 18 All The Mods stars. And to be able to get these stars, well, they do require a ton of materials, tons of nether stars and tons of blocks of things such as, for example, emeralds and diamonds. And today we're going to be setting up some insane mega farms to produce not only diamonds, but emeralds and potentially nether stars. Now, initially for the all the mod stars, I thought I had enough nether stars. I thought I had exactly the amount that I needed. And then I realized, oh, yeah. I need 15 three times compressed netherite star blocks for each star. And that total adds up to a lot more than the 118,000 that I initially thought. Who would have thunk it? Me messing up with some math. So now if I have done the math correctly, I should need a total of 1,771,470 nether stars. That's a lot. Now. What I have done to kind of help this accelerate along is I've made a couple of more seeds uh, the, the, with the amount of cruxes that I had available to me. And then I've also, believe it or not, I drug an entire line of soul pipes from our soul farm all the way over here through this hole in the wall there that goes way out there. And I'm now accelerating all of these. But even this is not fast enough. We still need way more than this is going to produce and our essence is gonna produce. And to do that, I think what I'm gonna end up doing, hopefully by the end of today's episode, is doing the process of making inert nether stars and converting them into nether stars. Now, I believe this is an add-on from All The Mods 9 and a recipe that they have included through KubeJS. So to be able to do this, we essentially need two PRCs, one that we're sending a Wither Skeleton Skull to, then this produces an inert nether star, and then it produces neutron gas that we can just immediately send to another PRC, which is gonna be right next to it, and then that is gonna turn it that one into 16 nether stars. Ultimately, this is going to be the way to make a ton of nether stars. Then that 16 then needs to go through another process, right? Now, we could take this and keep doing this. It doesn't make any sense to do that. But we can take that inert nether star and give it one millibucket. One millibucket of antimatter. And that will produce 16 nether stars. Now, I'm still not 100% done producing our antimatter. I think we need four more antimatter pellets before we have all that we need for all 18 stars. That math I have made sure to do. And that was exactly 90 antimatter pellets, I do believe. And believe it or not, we've already basically completed that. So heading on over here to this, by the time we get all of our other farms, we should have the antimatter. It looks like we only need three more, the antimatter done by that point. And then we can start taking all of this antimatter and using it for this process of making nether stars. So <laughs> that is going to be a task, but there's also some other things we're gonna need. And that's the fact that we are going to need diamond and emerald blocks. So um, let's go ahead and take a look at our compressed blocks. So as far as diamonds go, we need four times and emerald, we need four times. If I was to set up and say, hey, we need 18 of these, you can see we are missing like 3 million essence. And over the course of this time, we have only produced about 3 million, 4 million or so essence. So that's been quite a few hours of buildup and it's still not good. So what I had done and what I have right now is I have done a full stack of diamond seeds that are now being farmed down here and also two stacks of emerald seeds um, to uh, to go ahead and get done. And I just simply crafted those over here and I now have them all inside of our beds. But even that's not going to be enough. I still, I think, for at least emeralds and diamonds should set up alongside this a actual insane mob spawner. Now for setting up these mob spawners, I think that Lantia is going to be one of the best dimensions to do this in, as this is 100% just an ocean with no bottom, absolutely one of the most lag friendly places that we could set up a mob spawner, and also potentially optimizing those mob spawners and making sure that there is nothing else spawning within their range. 
And to be able to get to a location, I don't really want to do it here. We're probably going to use the center to teleport to that location. So I need to fly out until I find a nice point and I'm going to place my waystone down with an angel block that I should be able to place into the air and hopefully uh, set up an R's portal to teleport us to this location. So for right now, actually, I should be able to just set my scroll. I don't even need a waystone. And I'm just going to set my scroll right here. And then we got to get this set up to make a portal. Now using ours, if we're going to keep to this same dimension, we don't actually need to upgrade this because we're going to be teleporting from one location in this dimension to another. So we should be fine. Now we do need to set the border of this to be uh, this material. And so an easy way to do that is to just grab one of these materials and then go into ours and weave. We need mirror weave specifically. And I just need to build out this portal and you can do these on their side if you didn't know that. And we'll build it on their, on its side like this and we'll set it to look like this material. I'll place down my 100% full and then we should be able to toss this in and it creates a portal to that area. How cool is that? So now we can pop over here and just hop in and it's going to teleport us right to the middle of this pad. Now, currently I've set up some spawners right here and these are gonna be our spawner pads for the particular mobs that we are gonna have running on here. Now we're gonna have a, sp a bunch of spawner columns and uh, this is an 11 by 11 platform, by the way, and that leaves us with a nine by nine interior, which we could increase the range of our spawners further than default but I typically like the spawner range to be four, which is what it defaults to, meaning that the mobs should drop within range on these platforms. And the cool part is, is we don't even need like a tall chamber. These things should be able to spawn and simply fall down into this platform. Now for getting the mobs to go into the center and actually land on the mob crusher, I wanna use vector plates. Now I gotta be careful because vector plates can go kind of crazy. And these are just the tier two vector plates. Um, the base ones are green and they're a little bit slower than this, but these are honestly almost too fast, but I think they might, they might just work, uh, any faster than this. And then you risk throwing mobs all over the place. Um, so the way that I'm going to distribute these over to each of these platforms is I'm just going to simply use my copy paste gadget. I think this is going to be super, super convenient as I can just click here and click here to select basically. Um, let's see, maybe I can't be flying. If I am in copy mode, oh, I have to remove the anchor. Copy, and then shift, there we go. So now we have selected our bounds, and then I can go to paste. And uh, that should allow me to find a corner, hopefully, possibly this one. Uh, hold down shift, uh, actually open the menu, and then go to settings, and then let's bring this up, and let's actually clear <laughs> our placement. And then we might be able to just select a corner. There we go. And then we should be able to right click and that's just going to place them right in. I'm gonna to have to request quite a few of these. Yeah, this is gonna make this just so much simpler as they just nicely fade in here and I don't have to redo the placement of all of these. So yes, use the copy paste gadget for things that you're gonna be setting up multiple for. Now, before we even think about spawners, we have to think about the logistics of how we're gonna get our items from our spawners into a location. Um, so to do that, I think I'm going to be using these item collectors, the advanced item collectors specifically, and that should be more than enough for these farms. Um, so with the item collectors, I just got to figure out, we should be able to place them actually on the edge here, out here, and that should be within range. We may even be able to get away with one per two farms. And it does look like between these, we should be able to cover this area with just two. These are like just right there, perfect to where the items are gonna spawn. Now, as far as experience collection goes, there's only a couple of ways that we could go about doing this. In my case, I wanna go about kind of voiding it. Now, I do wanna leave a single block gap between that bottom section and here and place down a hopper. Now, the reason why I wanna leave a block gap is because redstone will go here and redstone, believe it or not, locks the absorption hopper. So we don't want to have our absorption hop hopper locked we want it to run, but we also want to filter our absorption hopper. And the way that we do the absorption hopper filter is we just fill this with cobblestone. We don't want it to collect any items. We just want it to collect the fluids. And then we just want this to send the fluids to the down. And then we will just simply put a fluid trash can on the bottom of this, just like that. 
Now, as far as the range is concerned on these, we probably want to increase the north and south. Um, or actually, can we create, can we go up and down? There's the up and down. So we need to go up with this. And I would say go up a few blocks, if not all the way, as far as it will go. That would probably be just fine. Okay, so now that I think I have the item logistics ready to go, um, I think it's now to start uh, collecting our spawners. And I'm thinking right now, maybe four spawners per, and maybe wondering, well, what mobs are we even going to be farming? And well, we're gonna be farming this mob that is in my bag. This right here, a cave creeper from Creeper Overhaul. I believe it or not, have had this in my bag for a long time. Um, we actually, I actually found it a long time ago, knew that I was probably going to end up farming this thing at some point, and today is that day. And then the other one, well, we already have farming at our base. That's going to be the Evoker? I think it's the Evoker. Nope, 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 the Vindicator. That's right, the Vindicator. Believe it or not, these two mobs should help us farm one, emeralds, and the other, well, diamonds, technically. Oh, and by the way, if you don't remember the best place to get spawners, well, it's actually the pyramids. These places are packed with spawners to the brim. So it's time for me to grab some DNA and specifically from these guys, I'm actually gonna grab enough DNA that way I can constantly reproduce all of these guys and have the exact amount of eggs I need. Now, this little fella, he looks super cute. We gotta be super careful with this because I wanna be able to grab it, but I don't wanna set him off. So I'm gonna go back and forth, back and forth. But this guy can be found inside of caves. You just kinda have to get lucky, I guess the best way I can describe it. And well, I lost it, but I got everything but two of the mob swaps, so I should be good. So now it's time for me to activate all of these. Happy oh birthday, boy, <laughs> there we go. Now with a bit of that egg work out of the way, it is time for us to go ahead and get our spawners in place. And the way I'm thinking about this is I'm gonna ignore this bottom layer as a spawnable platform. And instead we're gonna go one, two, three, four. And then our spawner is gonna go on top of here, at least our bottom spawner, because that will maximize its spawn radius, which is four, which is what I want these to be at least is going to be four. So we might have to come in and modify a few of these, but as soon as I place these spawners in, I'm immediately turning them off with a comparator because these will all need redstone signals. Now I wanna go through each of these and I wanna look at their actual spawn range. By default, this one is like at 20, right? Um, so to be able to remove them, I will put quartz on my offhand and then I will click here until I get this down to four. Now, aside from that, all of these items in my hand right here are going to increase these spawners to their maximum. So this piglet heart will, uh, should increase, if we don't have quartz in our hand, it should increase the spawn count to max, which I believe is eight for all of these. And then the gas tiers is going to increase the max entities up to, it looks like a maximum of 16. And then we're gonna hit it with all the modium, which is going to lower the minimum spawn delay on all of these down. And then we're gonna use the unobtainium to knock the maximum spawn delay all the way down. Now, keep in mind, some of these spawners, for example, have a lower minimum spawn delay than we actually get by default. So these have smaller minimum of delays, which is kind of ridiculous. So we need to just on these, take these down to hundred where these are stuck at like 60 and 80. That's really, really nice. Now, the final thing that adds the icing onto the cake is going to be putting our conduits on here. And that's gonna allow these to work even if I'm not around. Now, the way we're gonna activate these is gonna be with a redstone link. And we need to put these in receive mode on all of these spawners. And then we're gonna use the main one after we also set our signal. And now I'm gonna link all of these by putting emeralds on them, which it just marks these as the channel. So now if I put this down and I flip this lever, we'll see that they turn on and I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off real quick. But we can see that they do turn on and everything should technically be functioning. So let's go ahead and get this done. Um, I kind of wanna keep them to their, their own uh, sort of drawer. So I think on this side, we will do the Vindicator. I'm gonna start swapping all of these over into Vindicators for Emerald production. And then these Cave Creepers actually produce diamonds and emeralds and coal and also stone. So they produce a ton of good resources. And now I guess we can go ahead and start placing in our Mob Mashers. Um, now I do wanna put the max upgrades inside of these Mob Mashers. And I'm hoping that's gonna be enough. If not, we might have to start adding some other things to make this work faster. Now I will say one of the craziest recipes that I noticed even at the beginning of this pack uh, was 
was actually the recipe for the uh, mob grinding utils looting upgrade. It requires you to have at least a looting one book to make one of these. So we're going to need 40 looting one books. Now, to be fair, the enchantment library does make this a little bit easier. Um, so we can simply just go looting and then just start our progress of getting 40 of these books out of here. Oh, thankfully the auto crafts work for this. Oh boy. Okay, so on the sharpness and this, we now have pretty much everything ready. So we can start to head back. Let's head back to the Lantia. I love that we can drop through the portal. Oh, and we get teleported here. Okay. And then we just need to open these up and put our sharpness and looting in here. And that's really, I think, all we need. I don't think we need any undead or anything like that. Just sharpness and looting to try and kill these guys as fast as possible and get as much loot from them as possible. So, essentially, this is maybe ready for a test fire. So let's turn it on. And, oh yeah, there's a couple of things that we actually have to change. We need to make sure these run even without light. So we need soul lanterns on all of them. This will make them not require darkness. All right, so now for the actual test run. Oh boy. That's a lot. Now, these are not spawning, and I don't exactly know the reason why. For some reason, cave creepers are not spawning out of here, but I am getting vindicators. So I figured it out, I just ran a test, and uh, if you use a dragon egg on these, they will actually spawn. For some reason, there is some sort of condition that they are checking, and uh, you have to bypass that with a dragon egg. That will set it to ignore conditions. So we have to do this for each one of these. Thankfully, the Vindicators don't need it, but we have a ton of dragon eggs, so this works just fine. And then when I turn this on, now they spawn. Look at that. Okay, so now they're spawning like crazy. And just with this on for a brief moment, we can already see all of the resources we are gathering from this. We have a bunch of diamonds and emeralds just for having that on a second. And then over here, we have way more emeralds than I probably would ever need. But this allows me to do a couple of things that are pretty cool with these filters here. So if we set this to filter certain things with the advanced void upgrade, we can actually tell it to void these tools and armor specifically. So let's go to um, the match tags. And if we put this in here, we can tell it specifically what tags to do by scrolling. So I can say forge axes. And whenever I add that, all axes now, regardless of what they are, will end up getting put in here. And same for these pants, right? We can say forge armor. So that should automatically now remove all armor from this inventory. So if I go ahead and send these out, these should get vacuumed back up. And when they get vacuumed back up, they are just instantly getting voided, only leaving us with the things that we want. Um, so we can also do this with the banner. And so I can put the banner in here and you can see Minecraft banners gets added to that. Um, and then we also have these charm fragments. I don't really, I'm, I'm not really worried too much. I'm gonna keep what we have in here, but uh, we probably do need these charms, uh, the Vindicator charm fragments, all these charm fragments we probably want gone at some point. And you know what? How about even Inferium Essence? We don't need Mystical Agriculture Essence showing up in this farm and nor do I need the red hearts. All we're after are emeralds specifically. And I think over here, I'm also going to avoid the iron. I'm going to avoid the hearts and the essence from this farm as well, leaving us with just the gunpowder and the stone and the diamonds and the emeralds. Now, I'm also going to add another void upgrade in here, and this void upgrade is going to specifically be removing these charms, uh, just making sure that we have these voided as well, because I just don't need these extra charms that are spawning everywhere. And same for this one, because you can't actually have a regular like item list and also a tag list in the same one. You need another slot to be used for this to work. Now back at the base, I need to prepare for all of these incoming items. Now it is gonna be sent to this ender chest, which is then gonna get the items pulled out of it. So hopefully this will be able to keep up. If not, I will upgrade it. But all we really need to add to our farm that we don't already have in storage is going to be stone and gunpowder. And then we just need to upgrade these drawers. Now, I think all we need to do is simply turn this on and to be able to get the items transferring from this barrel into the ender chest is by putting my item cart in here. And then that should start to feed all of those items out. And that is being pulled from a single card that is set to extract mode with the maxed out overclocker upgrades. And that should be it. We also need to do that to this side. 
if I select this, I'll just put my item card in there. And then now we have all of that flowing through. So lots and lots of cool stuff going on here. And all we have to do to turn this on is by simply pulling the lever. <laughs> oh, goodness. Also, let's turn off our magnet and we need to make sure that our XP is disappearing and it looks like it is. Now, we're probably gonna have to monitor this chest because I'm sure there are still some things that are going to need to still be voided that we just haven't encountered yet. And uh, yeah, there's only a few ways that we're gonna find that. I think gold, by the way, is being destroyed. It was just what was left over. Yes, void is not going in there. And then I just need to monitor this for a little while and just make sure all armor, banners, everything from this thing is being voided. But outside of that, this is super producing diamonds technically and emeralds. Oh, this is just satisfying to sit here and watch. I could, I could look at this all day. So now that this craziness is out of the way, let's get into our craziness that is, well, nether stars. So the more we take a look at this, all we're really going to need is some of the ethylene that we're already producing from our PRC. And believe it or not, I'm actually taking this and automatically storing and voiding it. So we might as well use it, right? That's to be able to keep this constantly running and we have maxed out on our HDPE pellets. So we now get to take this and utilize it for making some stars. So all I'm gonna need to do is set up a new box from Mechanism. I know I'm using these all over the place, but these Quantum Entangle Porters are really nice for this. Um, so all I need to do is just steal the ethylene that's building up from here and put it inside of this Entangle Porter. We just need to create an ethylene channel and we should see ethylene now building up just like that. And uh, I should be even able to take this and send the ethylene over, I believe. Let's set that to output and that's gonna drain all of the ethylene that was in this tank now into here. Um, now, I really don't need to worry too much anymore about letting this build up. This is just gonna go in here and just be used and when it backs up, these will just shut off. Now, one of the main things we're gonna need, which thankfully I have enough antimatter for is this anti-protonic nucleosynthesizer. Wow, that is a mouthful. We need this thing right here, which does cost two antimatter, and I do have 92 antimatter exactly, so this actually works out perfectly, and we can now start to convert our antimatter into a usable material, and that is going to be these nether stars. So, all we have to do now is simply feed our antimatter that is being produced here and we need to feed it into this machine instead of the, the crystallizer here. So I can just go ahead and remove this, and then we should be able to pipe now the antimatter inside of this. While this also needs some power, we might as well use this as well. Now I think to make this as simple as possible to do, all we really need to do is just send our ingredient into this machine while taking the byproduct that this whole process produces, which I believe isn't really anything, right? This just produces hydrogen, which we can just put a tank on the bottom of and just ex export. So we should be able to put two PRCs kind of next to each other, I think. Uh, we do need to get water into these, but we can put water in through the tops. And yeah, I think this will work out just fine. And then our entangle porter here with our ethylene that we just put in set, and we can send that into this machine. Now to configure our PRC at first, we're gonna accept items in from the bottom and then we're gonna auto output the resulting item to the side. Now we are gonna be dealing with gases here. So we have our main water fluid. I'm feeding it in from the top. So we're gonna be dealing mostly with gases and we are gonna receive our gas from here as an input. And that's gonna be the ethylene received into this slot. And then we're actually gonna be outputting our gas that we get on as a byproduct actually to the next machine. So auto eject being on, it should look like this. And uh, now on this machine, it's gonna be a little bit different. I'm gonna go ahead and configure the items. We're gonna input from this side and then we're gonna output over to our, it's a big word, the uh, anti-protonic nucleosynthesizer. Yes, that thing. We're gonna send our items automatically to that. Now, this is also gonna be producing a byproduct of gas and we need to output that into this tank down here, which is gonna be hydrogen and we're gonna vent that hydrogen Outside of that, I think that's just about it. Um, now we do need to say input our gas on this side as well. And then we just need to send it skulls. And I think I'm gonna do that through another entangle porter. So simply I have a wither skulls set up and then we just need to give ourselves some wither skeleton skulls and put that in here. And I do have skulls being farmed. 
So we do have plenty of those, and those are coming from our setup over here, from our Wither Skeleton. And that should send Wither Skeleton Skulls, I think, to this, so long as I set my items to automatically insert. I think items is in the back, so yeah. So on the back, we have the input, and that should be accepting skulls. It doesn't really seem like it is, though. Ah, that's why. It automatically started collecting melons. I was wondering why. It just wasn't showing up in the UI. So now with the back being the only place it should be able to accept items from, now it should work and should now have skulls inside of it. And the best way to test, even though I can't see them for some reason showing up, is by simply placing this down after placing it in. And we should be able to set this as an export. And now we have skulls. So for this to work, we'll place the Entangle Porter down here, and then I'm just gonna set up the item configuration. Let's just go ahead and make sure Auto Eject is on, and we have our output set to the top. And that should send the skulls into here to then be processed. And then we need to make sure that this is set to ethylene. And so it is already set to ethylene, so we need to go under the gases section and make sure this is set to output and Auto on. And we'll see that fills with ethylene. And then last but not least, we need to send the items into here. And so do I have this configured properly? Output on under items, eject. And I should have the item set to input down on the bottom, but it doesn't seem to be taking the skulls. Of course, derp, I didn't select the wither skulls. So as soon as we set that, that will get to processing just like this. Now I got to get power put on these. Then that's going to be turning into the inert and should produce enough neutron gas for it to work. Okay, so now we need gates. Let's put some of those on there to make sure it's powered. And then that is going to run through its process and then should end up over here. Now, I just don't know how quick this is going to be. It says it does take a little bit of time, Oh, but uh, I don't know how much, like 10 seconds is kind of what I estimated. Uh, but I don't want, and I don't know, I've never used this machine before, so I don't know what the processing rate looks like. Oh, that was instant. So it's really just relying on how fast this is and our production of antimatter. Okay, that was a lot of, okay, that, that happened real fast. Oh, here we go. Go ahead and make this another star one. Make sure that that's ready to go. And then I guess we just need to say, hey, make sure to auto output. I'm gonna go ahead and clear everything except for, let's see, we do need items to input here. And then we don't need anything else except for the input on the top here for the gases. And so we just need to say output and automatically output. Wow, that is so cool. Okay, <laughs> that's just blooping the items directly into here. And then we can just pump this into our storage. Now we can't forget our energy and speed upgrades. So I'm gonna go ahead and put those in there. I don't think this gets any upgrades. So I'm gonna put these in here and we should notice this going a bit faster. Oh, wow. So while it's constantly running, it makes such a cool noise. But this is already blocked up because we have nowhere yet for these to go. So let's get that set up. So now all I'm going to do is place this in and then I just need an importer on the back of this and we should be ready to go. And I probably want to put a stack upgrade. Um, that's all we're going to need on this is a simple stack upgrade. Perfect. All right, let's grab that and we'll boop that in and then place the stack upgrade. And then this is already configured into nether stars and then also going to the back and auto outputting. And that means if we head back, we should be able to see that we are now blooping. Oh, that is so cool. And yes, now it's just a matter of how fast this actually processes up. Oh boy. And that produces 16 nether stars each, by the way. And it looks like I am just slightly not producing uh, antimatter fast enough for this, but I'm assuming once the antimatter is down and depleted, it's only going to produce it as fast as we're producing the antimatter. So and it only uses one, and this is producing it pretty quick, I would say. And so this is essentially like having 16 withers spawn every couple of ticks. I don't know what I could even make that would go faster than this process. And this has also got to be one of the coolest sounds in mechanism. Like it would get old after a while, but that's such a cool sound. Oh, and it just, if you're wearing headphones, you're really going to experience this right now. Oh, it's its pretty darn cool. Like, I've never set this up before, so 
And I'm I'm so glad that because uh, I've always wanted this. I've always asked. I was like, man, how come nobody makes custom recipes for this thing? Because it's always been one of those things that I was like, if we take a look at antimatter, by the way. Um, let's see, antimatter. Uh, if we take a look at the uses for antimatter, I've always been like, man, this is just not great. Like a skeleton skull to a wither skeleton skull, like maybe for vanilla, but. If you're already producing antimatter, like this is kind of ridiculous, right? Turning gray wool into quartz, like that's not that useful. This is a kind of useful one, but not even. Redstone, I mean, that's a horrible trade. A beacon into an in crystal, like why? <laughs> Who even come up with that idea? Um, so things like that, like I've always been like, man, I really wish there was some implementation and this is actually phenomenal. I love this. So guys, I think with all of that today, we're going to have to call it a day. It has been fantastic. I hope you enjoyed today's episode as we grind towards the All the Mods 9 star. Oh boy, I am so excited to get there. And if you're excited too, be sure to click that subscribe button so you don't miss out on the episode where we do end up crafting it and a future series just like this one. Guys, it's now time for me to thank the amazing supporter of today's episode. And that amazing thanks is going to go out to Darkness32111. Thank you so much, by the way, for your amazing support and supporting this content in one of the best ways possible. And guys, if you're interested in supporting, all you got to do is go to discord.gg or slash chosen architect and join the amazing crew today. Over there, be sure to check out the Discord if you haven't already. And or you could support on Twitch or shoot, even Patreon if you feel like it. Or even here on YouTube. Thank you guys so very much for watching. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one. And as always, thanks for watching. Bye!